I'm coming to you, set by my Christmas tree, to talk to you about how 1960s psychology and Elton John can help you build your brand and get more customers. A weird combination, but let me explain. So it's that time of year, the festive period, and obviously we're being bombarded with those you know, tear jerky ads, the ads that pull on our heartstrings that come out every year. And no matter where you are in the world, you've, you've usually got, you know, a Christmas ad that you look forward to seeing. I live in Australia in the Southern Hemisphere, but I am originally from England, hence my slightly messed up accent, a little bit up at the end of my sentences like an Aussie, but also still a little bit English. Confusing for the brain, I know. But I look out for the John Lewis ad every Christmas. It's one of those things, it's a tradition, and um, each year I'm excited to see what this ad will be. And apparently they start working on their ad in like February, the year before. They have this team of psychologists, as well as creatives, and they all get together to work out exactly how they can tap in to the right emotions and connect with people. So I wanted to talk to you about how you can do the same without the budget of John Lewis, without spending you know millions and millions of dollars or having a team of hundreds to work upon it. And there's a few things that they do. So the first thing they do to create emotion is to use story. So, you know, whether it's using a child in the video that we either connect with ourselves, that we see ourselves in that child, or we see our child in that child, or it reminds us of the innocence of Christmas, or, you know, that time of year that makes us think of family. And they use, you know, normally a traditional story arc that takes us on that journey. And the reason they use story is because it activates two parts of the brain. So two chemicals are activated. First of all, we've got a dopamine hit because we want to know. There's an arousal chemical that makes us want to know what's going to happen. So we get sucked in and we want to know what's the end of this story going to be. What is this story? You know, the story with, I think it was Buster the dog and the story of the little boy. And um, we go like, what's the end of this story going to be? So we get sucked in. Dopamine is released in our brain. The next one is oxytocin, which triggers feelings, it floods our limbic system with feelings of empathy because we connect with story. That story pattern connects with us on a heart level, on a subconscious level, and bypasses our conscious part of the brain. So if you think about this year's ad with Elton John, if you haven't seen it, wherever you are in the world, just um, type it into YouTube and it will pop up. They have used Elton John and taken the story of him going through the different ages to the backdrop of um, your song. So first of all, they always use um, a song that kind of transcends ages. So something that we would all identify with, whether they're old or we're young, and they often, most often use a piano. So that piano, first of all, does one thing. It calls upon the archetype um, of innocence. So it makes us think of some of a, you know, an innocent time. Christmas is this time of joy and innocence and using a piano and using that music helps us think about it. And then using the story. So this time, um, you know, it tells the story of Elton John's life. It goes back in time cleverly with him playing this song as the backdrop to the very moment that he got his very first piano. And it was at Christmas time. And immediately you can think maybe about a gift that you were given when you were a child, or maybe you've got children yourself, so you're thinking, wow, that was the gift that changed the trajectory of his life. So you're, you're going on this story and you can identify, like you're not a famous pop singer, maybe, maybe you are, but um, you know, you're going on this story with them and you can connect and you can think, oh, that gift that I might give to my daughter this year, maybe, that, you know, recorder, that clarinet or whatever, that tennis racket might be the start of a change in their career. So they're using archetypes and they're using story. And then thirdly, um, they, they're very clever in making you associate Christmas with John Lewis. So it's never product focused. Their ads are never focused on buy this latest toy, buy this latest gift. 
It's all around creating that singular focus. And I talk about this a lot when it comes to marketing and branding, being known for one thing and kind of owning something. And they want to become synonymous with Christmas. They kind of want to own Christmas. So you see John Lewis and you think Christmas. You see Christmas and you think John Lewis. I mean, I have been away from my home country for over 15 years, but still at Christmas time, I think, oh, I wonder what that John Lewis ad is going to be this year. So they're creating that connection with the word Christmas on a subconscious level. So when it comes to your brand, think about how you can tell story to evoke emotion, how you can use um, archetypes, so how you can call upon what kind of personality or what kind of archetype does your customer most readily identify with and how can you be known for one word what is the thing that you want to be synonymous with when people think of your business your brand your product or your service what do you want to be known for try and make that as narrow as possible like bring it down to one word so you know there's um a coach that i know and their one word is performance so whether you want to perform in sport or business then you go to this one person. You know, it might be that you want to be known, uh, you know, what, whatever that word might be for you or whatever that category or whatever that thing, focus your message around it so much that you become synonymous with that, that you become known for that. So you're not cluttering the marketplace with loads and loads of different things. Hi, Gareth, nice to see you. I'm terrible at, um, tracking comments and looking at who's watching at the same time as talking because even though I'm a woman and everyone says we can do more than one thing, I cannot. I can't talk, listen and look at the comments at the same time. So if you do leave comments, I promise I answer everyone. I do. Um, but it'll probably be after the live because I'm not good at doing two things. But yeah, so I just wanted to recap. So there's three things that you can do to use this psychological kind of effect um, that Christmas advertising uses in your brand. So story to activate dopamine and oxytocin, being known for one thing, and then being really clear on the emotion that you want people to feel. So what is the emotion you want to trigger with your message? And if you can get really clear on those three things, none of them cost any money. So none of these rely on Facebook advertising, tactics, any of those things, they're all free. All you need to do is use your mind and a bit of research. But these are the things that make the difference in your business. So when you do go out with an ad or you do go out with an email sequence, that it makes an impact because it has triggered the right emotions in your ideal customer to make them want to connect with you, to make them want to buy and to make them want to stay loyal. So that is all for now. Good to chat to you. Merry Christmas. I will just do a little shot of my tree. This is the tree. Um, that I don't like my kids touch. This year for the first year I've bought a crap tree in the other room because they can show, shove all their um, awful baubles on that. It's not very, it's not very attractive at all, but um, I had to do it because I just can't bear for my beautiful tree to be destroyed. So Merry Christmas. See you later.